To get a better understanding following the concepts expressed in the previous movie number one, I will show here what happens with three of the water analyses already described. Observing the total dissolved solids TDS, in the different waters from that table, I will select a water with a low TDS, a second with a medium TDS, and the last selection with a high TDS content. Now, we will study the respective chemical analysis. Entering into the blue cells of the calculator, the figures shown in the column of water number 3, the low TDS water selected, results in an immediate consideration of these values. As observed, total solids are low, hardness isn't too high, and there are no dissolved minerals that exceed permissible drinking water limits. Consequently, this is a classifier as a good water to be used in soil sculpture nutrient solutions. The water in column number 9 presents other characteristics containing more and also different dissolved solids. In spite of the fact that the hardness is still in a suitable range, the amount of solids dissolving it is practically two and a half times that of the previous water discussed. However, it could still be used successfully if final formulation is well balanced. This program is excellent for achieving such a result. It should be observed that the amount of nitrates and arsenic makes this water undrinkable. Both ions are out of limits. They are toxic for human consumption. Care should also be taken when designing a nutrient formula, since poisoning of plants can also be possible phytotoxicity. Lastly, water number 18 demonstrates the problems of bad water. First of all, it is a hard water and has serious difficulties to ever be considered as a healthy potable water. It has several mineral ions out of the accepted limits for human consumption. The amount of dissolved solids that are carried by this water, regardless of the quality and quantity of each one, is too high for hydroponic use. Thus, it will be difficult to construct an acceptable nutrient solution, especially for those left plants that require lower conductivity values. Note that the sodium and chlorine ion content, while being okay in respect of their drinkability limits, are completely out of limits for growing plants properly. This water would need to be treated by reverse osmosis before it could be used for the growing of plants. I will continue with this subject in video number three of this series.